What's up, everyone? Kyle here. I'm really excited to be starting a subscription for this podcast. Now, that doesn't mean that you need a subscription to listen to this podcast, but the benefits of getting a subscription are no ads like this one and a shout out on each episode, as well as knowing that your money is going towards doing something good. This money is not meant to go to me. Some of it is meant to help me maintain this podcast and keep getting guests on, but most of it uh, is meant to go towards providing school supplies towards kids in need. It's my commitment to put three dollars of every uh, of every monthly subscription towards uh, providing school supplies to kids in need and helping them achieve their goals and dreams as well. Um, this is a passion of mine. This is something that I really um, have been pursuing. This is why I have started all this, uh, the podcasting, the books, everything like that, was to give opportunities to other people. So I'm very excited to be able to do this now. Uh, the subscription is $4.99 a month, so nothing crazy. Less, uh, you know, one cup of coffee a month, that sort of thing. Uh, but it's very exciting, and it's going towards something that I am really passionate about and believe in. And um, I hope you uh, enjoy the benefits of being a premium subscriber. There will also be discounts and, and things along the way. Um, that I'll make available to people as time moves on and as this continues to grow. The link to subscribe is in the description below, so check that out. There's also a link to donate uh, towards the mission of providing school supplies to those in need, so you can do that as well. Uh, Thanks again, and enjoy the episode. All right, welcome everyone. This is Our Travel Experiences. I'm your host, Kyle Rasmussen, and today I have with me my friend, Emma. Emma, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Um, I'm going to apologize to the listeners. I already apologized to you, but uh, lose my voice here. I'm currently in uh, Dubai as I'm recording this uh, with Emma, and I've been talking all week uh, at a very big conference, and so my voice is trying to give out on me a little bit here, but uh, we'll get through it here. So, uh, Emma, kind of give me a background. Uh, you know, we, we met in Cuba earlier this year, which is kind of wild. Uh, that seems like so long ago, actually. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it was like a year ago or more. <laughs> yeah, but you, you've been all over the place this year. So I'm really, really interested to hear about your travels today. Um, but let's just kind of start off, you know, where, uh, tell me about what, what you thought about Cuba and our trip there. I loved Cuba. It was just some place I've always wanted to go. And then it was a spur of the moment. Well, not spur of the moment, but like it was um, Chris, our friend that was on the trip. He said he was going. So I quickly signed up too. Wasn't on the 2023 plans, <laughs> but I'm glad <laughs> it was. Um, it was just so cool to see that culture. And What's up, everyone? Kyle here. I am super excited to share that my audiobook version of Travel Tips is up now. You can find it on Audible, Libro.fm, and anywhere else that you get your podcasts. Go check it out um, and and buy a copy. It also has 30 minutes, uh, a little over 30 minutes of bonus commentary uh, that isn't in the actual book, so that's a little added bonus. Um, But go check it out. Uh, I appreciate all the support, and I hope you guys enjoy the episode. I wasn't on the 2020 plans for me, but decided to join along. Um, and I'm glad I did because it has always been on my list to see some point. Um, it's a place that's not always been open to us, but it was um, amazing to see that part of the world. It's a totally different world, of culture, government. Um, one of the most different in that way. And it was one of the most learning experiences I've ever had in a different country. Um, so I loved it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's it's quite amazing. I mean, uh, I don't, you know, I I think it's kind of hard to know what to expect going to a place like that, especially with some of the history there. But I I thought it was one of my, probably one of my favorite locations that I've been to personally. I mean, people were so nice. The weather was perfect. I mean, so many great areas of that. It was really, really quite surprising, to be honest. Yeah. And I feel like there's so much... Like when you tell people you're going to go to Cuba, I think there's a lot of angst around there, um, and yeah. a bit nervous. And then when you're there, it's more, I probably felt one of the safest places I've been. Like I've personally yeah. felt safe there. Um, 
was yeah, just... honestly, it was it was very. I, everyone was super friendly. Like, didn't have any issues. You know, late at night or anything like that. Like, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. And our trip leader made it even more amazing. Yeah. I think having that local yeah. connection. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so is that the first time you've been on an FTLO trip? Um, first international FTLO. I've been on the Denver trip. So that's how I met Chris. Was on the Denver one in the fall, and that was just a weekend one. Um, yeah. What was that experience I, like? <laughs> it was interesting. Um, it was actually their last one, but it was it was a local experience. It was fun. You just went out onto a ranch. Went. I went horseback riding a couple times, so it was a good, relaxing weekend, but it wasn't like one of their international trips. Yeah, yeah, okay. Do you have plans more uh, with FTLO in the future? Yeah, um, looking at, I haven't figured out my 2024 yet, but the Columbia <laughs> one is actually really on Ooh. top of my list um, of their trips. Um, yeah, I, I did on- that one. That one is amazing. Yeah. Another spot that, like, I feel like there's some angst when you say that you're going to go there. <laughs> I've heard it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, kind of same thing. Like, you know, there's some, I guess, negative connotations around that place. But when you get there, you realize, man, everyone's just so happy. And, you know, it's it's a lot safer than you think. And people are so welcoming. The food's great and everything. It's just, I don't know. I, I, think, I think that's the case with a lot of places around the world, to be honest. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so what other uh, trips did you go on this, this past year? This year? Um, I did that one. I did, a, in, for domestically, I went to New England, which is where I'm originally from. So okay. I was able to bring some of my friends there. Um, we did Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. So that was really great to show some of my friends from the South, the, yeah. um, where I grew up. And then internationally, I did through FTLO, I did Turkey. Um, and this is all one group, but I did Turkey and then left the group trip and went to Italy, which was my base point in Milan. And then I did Switzerland um, and then like Como. And that portion was completely by myself, solo. <laughs> okay. What, what's that like going from a group trip to a solo trip? <laughs> I was really nervous this time around. So I used to, before the pandemic... I've been solo a couple other places. Like I've been to Portugal by myself and then Vietnam. I mm-hmm. went for a couple of weeks and did the full backpacker thing <laughs> where okay. I didn't have any plans or all my hostels set up. Um, but it's been years since that. I think that was 2019 or okay. 2018. Um, so I felt really out of practice. I was definitely nervous because when you're with the group, you have kind of that built-in family or built-in friends. Yeah. Um, so it's completely different. Um, but I think I actually thrive a little bit more solo, um, cause I'm more timid, <laughs> um, <laughs> reserved. So I feel like I still get lost in group settings sometimes, but when you're completely solo, you have to branch out and you have to ask people for yeah. directions and all that. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, like every introvert should have to go travel solo because it really forces you out of your comfort zone. Exactly. And it proves my, to myself every time that I will make friends. <laughs> it will be okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I have, I always enjoy that. Like um, I've traveled solo a lot and just like going to a coffee shop or a bar or something and just like, just kind of sitting there and like, you can talk to the barista or the bartender and then you can meet the people next to you and stuff like that. And I just feel like you can make some really great connections just doing that. Exactly. <laughs> um. So yeah, what was uh what'd you do in, in Turkey with FTLO? Yeah, so we started in Istanbul, um, did that for a couple days, and that was cool to see like the um the cultures with the mosques. I've never been to a mosque or anything like that before. Um and then but we did a the spice market the bazaar. So it was huge. <laughs> I don't yeah. know why I was in it. Like I knew it was big, but it was just very, very busy. Um, so that was cool to see that for a few days. I feel like I could see more. There's just so much to see in Istanbul. Um, and then we did Cappadocia um, and the hot air balloons, which was amazing. <laughs> did that at sunrise. Um, I spent a few days there. And then we went um, 
towards the coast. So then we did Ephesus and then Bodrum, which is the coast. So it started out really busy and I feel like it just kind of tapered off and was more relaxed by the end, which okay. was kind of nice. <laughs> uh, yeah. What was the, the sunrise like in Cappadocia? I think that's like a bucket list for so many people. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, I would rec- definitely recommend booking ahead if you can't say book up fast. But okay. um, it was amazing. Like there's like hundreds and hundreds of balloons. Wasn't nervous at all. Like I thought I was. I don't always love heights, but <laughs> very at all. <laughs> it's a, they're so big the balloons. Like I think there's like twenty people at least in the balloon. <laughs> oh wow! Jeez. Um, yeah. <laughs> huge <laughs> huge, but it was fun to see because like, we saw one morning we did the we actually went up in them and then the next morning we watched them from the ground so that was cool too to see them from that oh, perspective nice. yeah, yeah. you kind of best of both worlds there yeah exactly <laughs> and they're everywhere like you turn in the corner and it there's a balloon in the morning yeah <laughs> oh that's awesome so uh so turkey and then you said you went to italy yeah, so I had my base point, which was all, that was not the original plans of where I was going to go, but I just decided I wanted to do something solo. Um, but I did, Milan was the base point, just because you can take a train to Switzerland and then a train to Lake Como, which is where I ended up at the end of my trip. So it was just a night in Milan each night. <laughs> okay. Did you get to explore Milan at all? Um, I didn't explore too much, but that was just because I had really bad luck <laughs> when I was going to Milan. Like every time oh, no. I traveled there, I just had bad travel days and just bad luck. So I didn't oh, get to no. explore Milan as much as I wanted to, but I've been lucky yeah. in my travels to not have bad luck until this trip. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's all about you know, what are some moments when, you know, maybe a flight got delayed or some other issue arose? Like, you know, tell me a little bit about that experience and how you kind of overcame it. Yeah, so Milan, it just seemed like it was just chaotic. So, like, the first time I went there, it's just chaos on the flight itself. It was very busy. Didn't have any delays, but it was just the airport is, like, an hour away and trying to get transportation there. Um, so by the time I got there the first night, um, there wasn't much to do. But then I learned that there was train strikes the next day, which, thank okay. God, my hostel person told me that so I was gonna like explore but then I was like okay I gotta leave at like 6 a.m <laughs> so I can miss the train strikes um then when I got to Switzerland it was fine but then on the way back because of the train strikes they were overbooked um so everybody had like double like two people per seat <laughs> assigned seats well, so it was just yeah. chaos that. and then That's my phone <laughs> Yeah, and then my phone didn't connect to any service, like Wi-Fi or service. So I had like two hours trying to figure out where I was going once I got to Milan. <laughs> so that was the point where I was like, I need to, because it's getting dark, and I was like, I need to figure out what I'm going to do. I need to make a decision. And that's like a point where I think traveling is so important for everybody because it shows you you have like, you have no choice but to deal with it. You can't yeah. freak out. <laughs> so yeah, I you got to kind of learn that. things on the fly, don't you? And, and just kind of figure it out as you go exactly like i was like i either i'm just gonna go and hope that I, my memory's good or i try to find somebody and i did eventually find someone that connected me to their hotspot so i could get to my hospital oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was chaos and then when i got like later in the week once i got to like como which mm-hmm. the main way to tra- go around there is by ferries and then it was like a two-hour wait to get tickets and then while we're there they announced that all ferries were going to be postponed because there was a boat race <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it was just figuring all that out too was, but again you just gotta figure it out as you go because you can't just stay there and freak out <laughs> yeah, so, I'm yeah how much time do you think you've spent like waiting in an airport or waiting for a for a boat or a ferry or a car or something like that <laughs> well in Italy alone I feel like I probably spent like <laughs> five plus hours per day <laughs> I yeah. feel like each day I there <laughs> Um, I've had luck, knock on wood, hopefully I'm not jinxing myself for 2024, but I've actually had really good luck, um, with travel in general. <laughs> so like with delays and flights and all that, I haven't spent too, too much. I feel like it delays. I've had a few hours here and there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was overdue, I guess. I would have liked it not to all be in 24 hours, but, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been lucky for the most part. Yeah. 
yeah. That's just that's the unpredictability of travel, I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then um, when you're solo, like with, with on trains, you have to be more cautious too, because you can't just leave your bags because you know yeah. I'm stolen. And then just <laughs> thinking about yeah. that stuff. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so then Italy, and then you went to Switzerland. And how long were you in Switzerland? I was only there for four days, and I already like I want to go back so badly. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go back to the summer. Like it was amazing, yeah. So I just um, I went to I'm going to mispronounce it. It's the Interlaken area, but it's Junfraga. <laughs> I can't pronounce it. Yeah. Um, but it's the region of that area um, where there's Interlaken, Lauterbrunnen, and um, Grindelwald. And then I stayed in a little tiny town on a mountain called Gimmelwald. So you have to like take a train to Grindel or to Lauterbrunnen and take a gondola up to the mountain. And that's oh, where I stayed for a few days. Yeah. Wow, what was that like? That had to be amazing. It was amazing. I just, I had plans to do other things like in like the town, like the bigger towns off the mountain. But once I got to that hostel, I didn't leave um, the entire time I was there, which was only a few days. But there's just so many hikes around. There's another town like further up that you can walk to or take a gondola to. Wow. Tiny town. Oh. Like there's a hostel and then there's one other hotel. Um, and then otherwise it was just residential. Dang. No that's, cars. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. That, I mean, I'm sure the views were just incredible from up there. Yeah, yeah. like every window, it was just because it was in a on a mountain, but kind of in a valley, so you just had all the Alps surrounding you. Oh. And like, it didn't even look real when you were looking at it. <laughs> like, I know it's real, but it doesn't look real. Yeah. <laughs> Dang, I'm it. jealous. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, how did how did you? discover that place i mean it's, i feel like i've i've never heard of those places before and i feel like that's you know maybe not the most touristy place i don't know i feel like probably just social media or maybe like different like i watch different travel videos sometimes nope. on youtube um but i th somehow just found i think the mountain hostel and then i figured it out from there um and that's where i learned about like because I feel like Interlaken is pretty well known, but that's, I didn't know about Lauterbrunnen or Grindelwald. But it's all that like same area. So once I've discovered Mountain Hostel, I feel like it all stemmed from that. <laughs> yeah. So you said you were just hiking, and you know, what other kind of stuff do you do when you're traveling solo? Um, so I usually don't have like an itinerary or anything. I just which is great with the hostels too, especially this hostel, like you find friends and they give you ideas. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a big person of, I just like to walk around. Like okay. if you're in a city, walk around the cities, go to the cafes, restaurants, that type of stuff, walking tours. Um, Do you have I'm not uh, a huge any... museum person, but... Sorry, what was that? I'm not a huge museum person, so I don't usually okay. do that type of stuff. I really just love getting the cultural experience food tours are good too yeah is there anything like each place you travel to that you like a souvenir that you always get or like a certain food that you always try or something like that postcards <laughs> I, get, postcards. I try to get a postcard like and i've been slacking on that lately but i usually <laughs> get postcards each destination i have a whole box full of them um so i like those just look back and i like unique ones like if there's not the typical like i like finding vintage postcards if possible That's yeah hard to find, but <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's your favorite postcard that you've gotten um there was one i think it was barcelona and it was a vintage one like it was one from like probably the 50s or 60s so that's okay. probably my favorite one that i have wow wow yeah. what's uh <laughs> was, was barcelona your favorite place that you've been to no, I think the favorite place I've been to, well, Switzerland, because <laughs> um, that yeah. was a little, uh, crazy experience. But then other than that, I really, really love Portugal, um, Porto, particularly. I love Porto. And then I really like Vietnam, too. I, each place is so different, but I would say Portugal is yeah. probably my favorite place, and Switzerland. Like, those two are my favorite places I've been. And then Vancouver. Okay. I don't know. I, people always ask me that question, and it's so hard to answer because every place is so different. Like you said, you know, it's it, it's hard to really choose because they're all, you know, amazing in their own way. 
I know. And like, there's places that you can see yourself. Like, there's places that like I can see myself living here, and then there's places mm-hmm. that are so different, and you love it because of that too. Yeah, yeah. So if you, you said you really want to go back to Switzerland, uh, would you go back to to the same area, or do you want to explore other parts of Switzerland? I feel like I should explore other parts, but I do really love that area. <laughs> There's just yeah. there's so much in that because there's a big, um, it's a very active area too. So there's um, skydiving if you're interested in that. Yeah, okay. um, and all the different like adventure sports and like more hiking and just there's so much I didn't see while I was there because I, which is great. I love just kind of taking it easy and going with the flow, but there's so much I didn't see because I chose just to stay on the mountain. Um, I do want to go back at least for a few days to see the area and do the things I didn't do. (laughs) That's awesome. Um, And so then you just recently got back from Charleston, South Carolina. Is that right? Yes. So that was a spur of the moment. I booked it like three days before going. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) Yeah, I needed a weekend away. So but that was nice. Um, My first time there. Okay, what would you think? It was nice. I've been to Savannah. Um, I feel like they have similar vibes, like with the southern low country um, cities. Um, very big into the food scene. <laughs> so yeah. it was nice at Christmas time, too. So I don't know why, like, I knew it was going to be Christmassy, but it felt so, like, storybook perfect and <laughs> Christmassy. <laughs> so that was cute to see all that stuff. But yeah, I just, uh, have you traveled to a lot of places, like, during Christmas time? Not too much. I did that. And then a few years ago, before the pandemic, I went to Quebec City with my mom. Oh, wow. That had to be amazing at Christmas. Yeah. Like, it was beautiful because they had the Christmas markets and um, the old cities just all decked out for Christmas. That was another storybook place. (laughs) I feel like people people should really uh, not sleep on traveling around Christmas because there's so many beautiful places uh, in the winter time with all the all the holiday lights and things like that. I mean, it's it's incredible. I know. I want to go to the eventually go to the European Christmas market. I think everybody yes. wants to go there. <laughs> Highly recommend. I've been to a, a couple. They're amazing. <laughs> Actually, as we're recording this, and next week I'll get to go to one in. Very much looking forward to that. I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what what would be maybe some of your like top places that you want to visit now? Um, so Colombia is one of them. Um, it's been on my list for a bit, but I do want to go to South Africa. Ooh, I, haven't oh, yeah. Africa. I haven't been to Africa or South America, so those are two continents I need to get to. <laughs> okay. Um, and then like looking at either Morocco or Egypt. There's so many places I want to see, but I feel like those are on the my top yeah. for the next year or so, yeah. a couple of years. Um, okay, I want yeah. To back to Asia again too, but uh, yeah, another uh, another hard question to answer because there's so many you know places that are you know you always want to go to. I feel like the list never gets shorter. I know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, kind of share uh, maybe one or two of your favorite moments uh traveling that you can think of of course one of, i feel like i keep talking about switzerland <laughs> it's not just <laughs> the reason, but it was so amazing i think with switzerland um because i've not everybody likes to do hostels so i feel like people sleep on those sometimes but that hostel was amazing because you just everybody was there just to like relax and like go hiking you'd make friends and everybody just kind of like went off on their own in the morning um then yeah. being done in the evening so i think that was just such a cool experience just to be there make connections actually i met people from north carolina they were the first two people i met so i'm like you travel across the world and you meet people from north carolina <laughs> um, <laughs> but i think that was just such a unique experience like to be in a place where there's no cars you had service, but everybody was pretty much disconnected anyways, though, because there's just mm-hmm. a master. Um, so I think that was one of my favorites. Um, Vietnam, I really liked the experience because I felt like that was a big um, 
learning experience, I guess, for me, but it, cause it was, I went there, didn't have everything planned out and I kind of just fully did the backpacker thing of figuring out as I went. Um, so I think that was a really good travel experience too. Um, well, and then where else did you go to, mom? Yeah, so I did, started out in Hanoi, um, did a few days there, did Halong Bay, did a cruise there. So that was amazing to see that part of the world. Just totally different landscape, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, and then did an area called Ningbing, um, which is like more towards the middle, is a mountainy area with rivers going through it. This area is like the Halong Bay, but like on land, I guess. Um, and then finished it out in Hoi An. And I ended up, I was gonna do other things, but I ended up staying in Hoi An for a week. <laughs> so. Wow, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard of Vietnam is amazing, but I never had a chance to go. But uh, I'll, maybe uh, I'll be able to go soon, and I'll ask you for a, a bunch of recommendations. <laughs> yeah, I wish I was. I did it for two weeks, and I wish I did longer because I only saw part of the really? country. It, it's yeah, a lot of people do like a month, and they start from either north to south, and that or go south to north. But okay, yeah. When you uh, when you travel, do you usually go for like a week or two, or do you like to do um, like a month or longer? Have you had the opportunity to do that? I wish, but no. <laughs> <laughs> With work, I think two is probably the max. I, there was one time where I did yeah. three weeks, um, and that's when I did Spain. I did a couple of weeks with a different group, and then I did por the Portugal portion, which is by myself for a week. So that was three weeks, which was nice. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, two is usually my max that I can go with work. Yeah, it's always the always the struggle, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, what other uh, maybe like challenges have you faced while traveling, um, or other uh, you know moments that really stand out to you? Oh, I mean, I think just everywhere you go, just figuring out the culture and the language. Um, I think like the first day or two is almost like a whirlwind <laughs> yeah. shock to the system of trying to figure it out and figure out where you're going. Um, and like I said, I've been pretty lucky for most of the years of not having too many <laughs> bad challenges. But I think that's, um, there's that, um, figuring out transportation, just knowing where you're going to go. Um, I think most of my stuff, though, has been <laughs> all come <laughs> together in Italy. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been, yeah. yeah I've, and then figuring out visas. I do research beforehand because I have the challenge, too, like, especially when I'm solo, of being a solo female traveler. So doing the research uh, mm -hmm. ahead of time. And um, so I look at the safety, like the travel board and all that, too, of getting some more information as far as general safety and also the safety of being a female on your own. <laughs> Yeah, as as a solo female traveler, um, you know, have you ever felt unsafe as you've kind of traveled and backpacked around? For the most part, no. There, um, I would say in Germany and then a little bit in Italy was it like the two major spots where I felt like a little bit unsafe. Um, and then, sorry, <laughs> um, <laughs> But overall, I usually felt safe. I, I mean, you use a lot of caution. You're kind of always looking around and being on edge. And I do yeah. research a lot about the areas. But um, that was one thing that happened in Germany. I had dropped my ticket and the um, security guards on the train made a scene, <laughs> like on the train. Oh, they no. knew it was scene, so that was one challenge. <laughs> so I've a little bit scared <laughs> with trains ever since then. But um Overall, I felt pretty safe. That's why I said, too, like in Cuba, I felt super safe, like one of the safest places mm -hmm. I felt, um, which kind of surprised me. But yeah. Yeah. yeah well, what other uh, what advice would you have for, you know, maybe a, a solo female traveler who's looking to do the hostile backpack kind of travel? Yeah, I would say research is the best thing. So not just with the safety boards. I think if you just Google, there's different um, solo female vlog bloggers um around there both backpacking and ones that do hotels but they kind of give their input as well as if they felt safe um and some tips and tricks that they've done 
I think that's the yeah. that helps the most. Um, and just being cautious too. Like if I do hostels, I look, which I feel like I'm kind of aging now with those, but I feel like okay. with that, I do look at hostel world, kind of get some of the reviews, um, see what the culture's like there too. And just yeah. look in your gut. Like I didn't, the one in Milan, the hostel wasn't the best scenario. So I did end up just moving to a hotel, just trusting your gut with that. But yeah. Yeah, some some hostels are really nice, some not so much. <laughs> exactly. I've been lucky. I would say only a couple of hostels I didn't love, but I think the biggest thing is looking at hostel world and the reviews there. I think they give good a good overall a good idea of what the culture is like or the vibe is like. So Okay. Yeah, yeah. What's uh what's your favorite hostel you've been in? Um <laughs> again Switzerland. <laughs> but Switzerland I was like, okay. I, I, yeah, it's Mountain Hostel, and then um, I really like the one that I was in in Hoi An, called Lovely, like Love, and then L Y. Um, that's her name, uh, but that was a great, and they both for similar reasons, where it's just kind of this family atmosphere. Um, mm -hmm. The one in Vietnam in Hoi An, it was a smaller hostel. I think there was like twenty people max. Oh but wow! Every, yeah, every other day they did family dinners, so everybody would help and contribute and cook these oh, Vietnamese awesome. it was almost like a free cooking class too because I don't normally cook Vietnamese but everybody helped out and then everybody would sit at the table and eat and people from other hostels and other spots would come and eat too because it's such a known thing um, yeah that's that's really cool I, I don't think I've heard of that before yeah it was amazing I love those type of hostels where it's like feels like that family even if you don't know each other's names yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's just such a good community and that's why I decided to stay there for a week um that was just a few days because i ended up loving it so much and um it's just relax it's almost like you're living there because you have a place to go back to relax and there's people to talk to and hang out with um yeah yeah, yeah so when I, I mean it sounds like you do your research but then do you uh necessarily like book the stuff in advance or do you wait to get there to actually book you know train tickets and hostels and things like that so you can change your plans yeah i think it's different so when i did vietnam i did, i had a couple things that were booked um but i knew i wanted to kind of leave it open so a lot of that was last minute bookings vietnam was so cheap though so you don't have to worry about canceling yep. or changing um switzerland i booked train ahead of time because trains are so expensive so i got the swiss pass because i figured if i was going to get lost then i <laughs> it's already paid for it yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah i booked that stuff ahead and because i was out of practice i feel like with solo travel i wanted to have more of like a set plan um so i did book mm -hmm. everything and then i did a hotel my last night in switzerland and I loved the hotel because it was a nice hotel, but I kind of wish I didn't because I would have stayed longer in <laughs> Switzerland yeah. or in that hostel. But um, I would say it's a mix. I don't usually plan out activities. That's usually a spur of the moment or a day or two days in advance, unless it's something where you really have to book it in advance. But... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is there any, uh, like, any one place that you haven't been to, like, or like one activity that you haven't done in a certain place, like the hot air balloons in Cappadocia. Um, mm -hmm. Is there any other things like that that you haven't done that you would love to do? Yeah, I think with South Africa or Africa in general, safari would be amazing, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, any of the deserts, which I think you've done with Morocco, but like um, yeah. camels in a <laughs> desert. Yeah. Um, <laughs> think that just staying in the desert too like I, I was supposed to go and I, my plans change with this but I do want to go to Jordan eventually um and do the Wadi Rum desert and just staying in the okay. desert would be amazing yeah I think I think like seeing Petra and and, and the, all those places in Jordan would be incredible yeah I do want to get um, eventually Patty certified and um I think that opens up more <laughs> if you get scuba okay. certified um yeah yeah i have a actually my friend with, uh she's a big scuba diver and uh she's telling me about a lot of the places that she went it sounds scuba diving is not my thing but i mean mm -hmm. it sounds like you're certified there's a lot of really really cool places that you can scuba dive around the world yeah 
I have some friends that are certified and they love it. Uh, I don't know. Being being in the ocean <laughs> that deep, not my thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, lately too, when you hear about all the stuff, <laughs> the ocean's like, I don't know what's going on in the ocean lately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. This shark is just waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> just waiting for me to jump in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but you know, I think that's. I mean, not to go down a rabbit hole, but just like, you know, some of the fear that can come along with travel, and then just kind of, you know, facing that fear, I feel like it can just make it grow so much as a person. Yeah, because yeah. I was always terrified. Like I feel like hostels, people get so scared. And yeah. I think there are going to be more hotels now, um, just the age. But I, when I, one of my first trips I ever did um, was with a group, but it was still solo. But my is to Croatia. But then my friends on that trip told me because I had like a twenty-hour layover in Germany, and they're the ones that got me to go to the hostel, even though I was like so terrified to do it. And so then <laughs> when I did that, I was like, okay, this isn't so bad. So then I did it in Portugal for the week. <laughs> So it's like just opening up yourself to things that would normally scare you. Um, it's such a learning experience and helps you grow. Yeah. What What other uh, lessons have you kind of learned about yourself through your travels? I think the big thing is that you can, fig- like everything will be figured out, even if it's not the outcome <laughs> that you want. Um, and I think just someone that like every day, like in, like at home and stuff, I feel a little, but with anxiety so I think just showing myself when I'm solo or just with a group too but you can figure things out <laughs> it will work out yeah. <laughs> like it's not the way it's supposed to or you want it to but I think that's a good reminder and then if I get nervous about something in my everyday life I'm like well I traveled the world and I did this by myself I can handle this <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. um yeah so in, Emma any other uh you know pieces of advice that you want to give people or, um, you know, stories that you want to share about your travels? Um, I can't think of, I mean, the main thing is just being open to, I think the big thing too with travel too, if you, even if you have a set plan and itinerary, just allowing that to change because sometimes the best yeah. stuff happens too when that changes and nothing's going to go the way you want it to, even if you have it perfectly planned out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> being open yeah yeah, yeah. Piece of advice. <laughs> no i i 100% agree with that you know i i love to plan and research too and uh i've you know i've planned out trips so well and i can't think of one that has ever gone exactly as, as planned <laughs> i know i think just letting go too because otherwise if you're so set in the ways that it can lead to disappointment yeah yeah, for sure. ruined the feeling of the trip so I feel like just having your plans but then if it just being okay if it changes <laughs> yeah that being being open to a new adventure you know, I think. exactly <laughs> and I think you know when it, things don't go as planned that's when you can maybe have some of the most impact experiences exactly I think that's how it's going for me too <clears throat> Um, awesome. Emma, uh, anything else that you want to share before we, before we jump off here? Um, I don't think so. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thanks for, thanks for doing this. I know my, my schedule has made it kind of difficult for us to, <laughs> to connect, but I'm glad we, we could make it work and, uh, you know, talk about travel. It's always, always a great time. Uh, and hopefully we can, uh, travel again soon. I know we've, uh, our, our group had a lot of fun down in Cuba and, uh, you know, I think FTLO provides a lot of great trips, so maybe we'll we'll get to travel again together soon. Exactly, that's what the funny thing about FTLO. I was talking, I think, to Chris, um, one of our other friends, but about how that's the only, I've been on other group trips, but I feel like FTLO has the highest probability that you'll see somebody from a past trip. I just yeah. feel like people know each other. <laughs> that's oh. a good community. <laughs> yeah, they do. They have a ton of repeat customers for sure. Yeah. Uh, which I think speaks highly of them, definitely. So they're getting some more uh, free advertising here on this podcast. <laughs> that was good. Oh, uh, cool. well, well, Emma, uh, thanks again. I appreciate the time, and uh, I look forward to seeing you somewhere around the world soon. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So have a good one. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.
Hey everybody, Kyle here. If you enjoyed today's show and want more, you can always check out every episode on Spotify, Anchor, YouTube, and now Amazon Music as well. Just search for Our Travel Experiences on any of those platforms and it will pop up. You can also find everything all in one place on my website, OurTravelExp.com. And if you want to see my travel pictures as well as travel pictures from guests on the show, you can check them out on Instagram. The page is called Our Travel Experiences Podcast. And if you want to share your own pictures on the Instagram page or be a guest on the podcast, you can message me via that Instagram page or email me at OurTravelExperiences at Outlook.com. I would love to see your pictures and hear about your travel experiences, so please send them my way. And if that isn't enough for you, make sure to check out my weekly YouTube show from Around the World Fridays. Every Friday, I'm taking five to ten minutes to answer questions from listeners, share some souvenirs that I bought over the years, um, share my postcards over the years that I've accumulated, or share videos and pictures from one particular city or country that I visited, and so much more. So check it out, guys. You won't be disappointed. And uh, make sure you go subscribe to that as well. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you somewhere around the world soon. Thank you to all the listeners and subscribers of this podcast. Um, it's amazing that I uh, get the opportunity to do this and you know talk to all of these amazing people around the world and hear their stories and share it with you. Um, it's been a been a dream doing this. It's a lot of fun, and and I'm excited to keep uh, moving forward with it. Um, as always, the uh, subscriptions uh, three dollars of the monthly subscription goes towards providing uh, school supplies to uh, kids in need around the world, and um, I'll be providing more updates on those uh, on uh, progress with that as uh, as time moves along. But again, hope you enjoyed the episode, and we'll see you next week for another inspiring story and great episode. Have a great week. See you next time.